Here we they go. They now claim that if you believe we are endowed by our creator with certain unalienable rights, that you are a radical, fringe, anti-American extremist. One thing that unites all of them, because there's many different groups orbiting Trump, but the thing that unites them as Christian nationalists, not Christians, by the way, because Christian nationalists... Christian nationalists, Ben, not Christians, you know. because good Christians allow tyrannical governments to tell them what to do. <laughs> because Jesus said, turn the other cheek, Ben. You have two different things that you can look at. You can say, okay, does the president have those powers within the Constitution? Are those powers that are delegated to him? The answer is clearly no. No, no, he doesn't. Um, but you have historical precedents and you have illegal laws what the Founding Fathers in the Declaration of Independence called pretend legislation. You have, ever since 9-11, we have these um, declarations of emergency where the president assumed powers that he didn't have. And then you have historical presidents under, uh, you know, former tyrants um, that they did. There were t there have been presidents in the past that have arrested, um, uh, what's a, uh, you know, journalists that were reporting stories that he didn't like. All right, Ben, welcome back to the program. How you doing? Fantastic. Thanks for having me back. All right. Do I look happy to you? You look ecstatic. I woke up this morning just being bombarded with ideological hogwash from my wife sends me things on Messenger that she'll be watching on the phone and she knows she'll go, oh, Troy probably wants to see this. <laughs> This will trigger Troy. Let's this will trigger Troy, and then he'll go make a video out of anger. So this is an angry rant video. I was I'm editing something else, getting ready to put it up. It's not an angry rant. It's an it's a call to repentance. I know I'm not. I'm who am I? Right. I'm I'm a little old. That's why I think Rush Limbaugh. I'm starting to understand what he meant. I'm no Rush Limbaugh. You know, I know that. I'm a little old Latter-day Saint podcaster in the wilderness, a cute little fuzzball, right? That right. is calling to people to repentance. I've had, I talked to you today on the phone this morning. Yep. I'm getting uh, reels and for instance, I don't know if this is a deep fake, but uh, Biden slips up. Did you see that? Where he slips I, up. I see it, Reger slips up. I'm not sure what you're referring to. <laughs> Did you know Biden slipped up on something? What? Yeah. <laughs> you don't. Um, I'm shocked. And I'm not talking about him tripping on, on the airplane stairs. I'm talking about. <laughs> what do you call the airplane stairs? There's a name for it. Is there? I don't I have no idea. The tarmac? I don't know. Uh, the tarmac is the place out there where the planes go. Or you walk on the anyway, shut I don't up. Know what stairs are called. They're called stairs, airplane stairs. It's all I yeah. Know. Okay, so he's saying in a speech, I don't know if this is a deep fake or not, but it 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 makes it but it's circulating around where he's he's talking about the houses on fire in Chile. Oh. Or was it Lahaina? I know there's a fire in Chile and there's other fires going on like all yeah. over, right? Texas, I think. Uh, I yanked a video down because nobody cared. And then I had comments saying, you know, do some more investigation. There's other fires going on too. So I'm like, I don't have time. I've got so many other things going on, but I believe it. All right. Sure, yeah. So yeah, Biden slips up on this. Let me show you this. Yeah. Oh, there's, there's good old Joe. Yeah. All right. Joe. Listen to this. Because a lot of, if you fly over these areas that are burned to the ground, you'll see in the midst of 20 homes that are just totally destroyed, one home sitting there because they had the right roof on it. And anyway, Did you hear that? I took office, he must provide yeah. Texas alone. One home sitting there because it had the right, the right roof. roof on it. Like the, the, it's the 20 yeah. homes that are yeah. just yeah. totally destroyed, one now, home sitting there because they had the right roof on it. Okay, that could be a blunder of him or that could be a deep fake. I don't know. Or but, it could be yeah, a blunder meaning... He let it slip on accident, which you're not supposed to know. It'd be interesting to see if the, the houses in Chile that weren't burnt were blue houses as much as they were in uh, Hawaii. It'd be interesting to see. Right. So that's just one thing, Ben. The other thing is, 
I get in an argument with a good friend of mine who's a member of the church. And I'm not going to say who it is yet because some of you know who they are, who it is. But maybe later we'll we'll get into that. Uh-huh. Give me a few days. He doesn't have a problem coming on and debating me even. I'm not a debater. I'm an idiot. Okay? We all know <laughs> Troy. Everyone knows Troy is a complete imbecile. This is what information does in my brain. You see how debris gets caught up in these branches and trees? That's what it looks like when my brain processes information. But I have little guys in my brain that go and get all that debris out and they throw it back in the river and it eventually floats down somewhere. Then you guys get to pick through and find all the shiny things. But I, I, I connect with people out here because there are people. Look, I'm not dumb, but I'm not articulate. Does that make sense? Fair enough. Yeah. I, all right. You can be smart. You can have smarts and not know how to spit it out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I've met lots of people that are smart that are appear to be dumb as rocks, but they're not. Right. They just, they just can't, can't get it out. Spit it out. Okay. And that's me. But here's my point. Uh I had a point. So I'm getting uh and I I get in this debate, but I feel like God was guiding me because this member of the church, and I've heard this by others, and I told you this, Ben, uh-huh. there are people that, be- that believe that China is a good government. And we're talking members of the church. That I, I heard today, well, let, let me, okay, I'll, I'll get to it, sorry. But China is a good government, and I'm getting in an argument with this brother that's a member of the church who is older than me, older uh-huh. than me, okay? But I'm noticing a lot of these 70s teenagers, people that were teenagers in the 70s, uh-huh. A lot of them are spineless. I'm not talking about the boomers from the 60s even cuz they're that? kind of all they kind of went either way. But then you had 70s boomers and they're just lost. Okay? But 80s, we were Wolverines, Red Dawn, <laughs> you know, Reagan, the Cold War was coming back, you know, from the 50s and we were That was the economy was booming and we were we were not like neocons today. We were real conservatives. Most of us. Uh Now, the ones that raised babies that there are Gen Xers that are kind of like millennials that raised uh, that helicopter babies. And then you have tail end. Yeah. And those helicopter babies have blue and pink hair today. But here's the deal. Here's what I'm getting at. Okay. I get in an argument with this brother and I've heard this from other members of the church for that China's great, right? Communism, because those people are different than us. You've heard that before that they're, they're not used to the same Western economy that we are and they're happy and content. And I just said, Oh yeah. With being arrested when they speak out against the government, being I mean, forced like that. abortions, you know, the, yeah. everyone loves to have forced abortions. But, but everything I would bring up, you go, well, I know they made a mistake there. You know, with the, oh my the, gosh. the one child, was it two children or one child? One child policy, yeah. The one child policy. But, you know, they, but, you know, Political our government's not perfect. Where they have their chains, they've been chained so tight for many years that their skin starts to wrap around the chains themselves. I mean, you yeah. Know, everybody makes mistakes. You know, the Tiananmen Square in the, in the late 80s, everybody makes mistakes. Right now, killing hundreds of millions of Chinese, everybody makes mistakes. Well, I agreed with him about our Western. He goes, "Well, our government's not proven." I go, "No doubt, no doubt." But it's the people we're allowing to run it. That's what makes it not perfect. And and this isn't like an either or. Like, if I hate China, I have to love the United States. You know, government. Right. That's a ridiculous, you know, conflation. Well, and how many people come? How many people are trying? I don't see a bunch of people trying to get into China unless they live in North Korea. Okay. Right. No, serious. If they uh, live in yeah, North no. Korea, China is no, like North, North paradise. Korea, that's, how, that's how bad North Korea is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but I do see people trying to get into the United States. Yeah. All right. And, and I kept bringing up different arguments to this brother. Okay. And yeah. then we got into the war in heaven and he said, yeah. I said, well, the war in heaven was fought because of agency. And he literally said, well, we can, we can have an argument about that. 
that that that's a I'm like what? He never told me what it was fought over. We we have yet to get to that. But this is what's going on in our world. This is what's going on in our these are some of the members of the church that we deal with. So then I get this is all this morning, Ben. <laughs> and then I see this right here. Let me show you. Here we they go. now claim that if you believe we are endowed by our creator with certain unalienable rights, that you are a radical, fringe, anti-American extremist. One thing that unites all of them, because there's many different groups orbiting Trump, but the thing that re- not, unites them as Christian nationalists, not Christians, by the way, because Christian nationalists... Christian nationalists, Ben, not Christians, you know. because good Christians allow tyrannical governments to tell them what to do. <laughs> Because Jesus said, turn the other cheek, Ben. Oh, yeah. Okay. Nationalist is very different, mm-hmm. is that they believe that our rights as Americans, as all human beings, don't come from any earthly authority. They don't come from Congress. They don't come from the Supreme Court. They come from God. Can you imagine these Christian nationalists? And I'm, I'm not quite sure how this casting session went. I assume it was that the executives at NBC, they said, okay, we need someone to come uh-huh. on and do a segment on Christianity, religion, uh, natural law, political philosophy, and American history. And then this lady raised her hand. And she said, well, I don't know anything at all about any of those things. And the NBC producer said, oh, you're perfect. All right, well, let's get you on. You're hired. They now claim (laughs) that if you believe we are endowed by our creator. All right. So there it is. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. You are now a radical that Christian nationalist document, that. the Declaration of Independence, that's so crazy. What, 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 what do you think about this, Ben? The lady's a psychopath. I mean, they want you to believe, they want it to be normalized that your rights come from Congress or from some body of men, so that way they can l- claim to legitimately take away your rights. But, I mean, that's what, because that's what it means. If a, if a person gives, gives out rights, if an, indiv- an earthly individual gives out rights, that means anything they give or take away is legitimate. And so the, it's, it's the only way that they can implement tyranny is if they make you think it's radical and extreme to believe that you got your, that you got your rights from government and that government's role, according to the Declaration of Independence, that extremist document, the Declaration, says that government's sole role is to protect those God-given governments and that when government becomes destructive of those ends, it is our duty and obligation to alter or abolish that government. So they have to get rid of that mindset so that you believe that whatever the government does is legitimate and that you're an extremist, a dangerous person, if you want to be able to preserve what God gave you and what you fought for to get a body in the first place. Well, it was key. There was one thing that they said that was kind of that resonated with me that that made so much sense. And it was the woman raising her hand. I know he was being sarcastic. The puppet. Yeah, yeah. Right. And and I firmly believe and I pointed this out to Andrea because then we saw something from the view and I'll show you guys in a second. We'll talk about that. This was all this morning and right after I got back from seminary and I'm like, boom, boom, boom. I, I can't stand it anymore. Okay. I talked to this brother. I d- then all of us, all these things. Right. And yeah. I said, they're the, it's right. They're right. These producers don't want people on there that think, because even if there was a person that said, I'm intelligent, I'm educated. And the producer's like, yes, you are. And they go, but I can act woke. I can act left. They don't want that either because you, they might slip up and be intelligent. <laughs> so they really do want people that don't know what they're doing. And so that comes to the view. They are modern day Marie Antoinette's. And let's go to that. Let's look at a scenario where the Supreme Court says, yes, he has that. He has all those rights. He is immune from everything. Yeah. You know what Joe Biden could do since he is presently president? What? Whoa. <laughs> he could throw every Republican in jail. Whoopi Gober is just going crazy. This is- okay, so <laughs> I'm <laughs> he can't throw everybody in jail that's a Republican. Well, not legitimately and, anyway. 
But that doesn't make any sense anyway, because some of the Republicans they like, they love neocons. Oh, they love Mitt Romney and, you know, John McCain. Right. And so Liz Cheney. And she knows that. But she's talking about uh, white Christian nationalists. Not, not even white anymore. They're talking about Christian nationalists. See this man right here? He's a conservative. Uh -huh. Brandon Tatum. He loves Trump. I don't know much about him, but he would be considered a white Christian nationalist <laughs> today. Right? Yeah. Because a lot of the black constituency of Trump is now speaking out against the left. Most of them are black males that are in that c black community. And they, what are they going to do with them? They have to group them with us. You know what I mean? They have to group oh, yeah. them with. Well, it's with, like when Biden said the last election cycle that you're not black if you like Trump. Right, 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 right. And what does that do? That because most black people have uh, Judeo-Christian values. They were raised with that, and so they never knew really why they were voting Democrat, but they were told over and over again. Now I know, Ben, you're like I don't. I'm not Democrat, Republican. Any, I'm not either anymore. By the way, I'm a constitutionalist, whatever that means. I'm a freedom <laughs> lover. Yeah. And now it's bad to love freedom. But anyway, let's go on because I want you to see uh, the re so I'm we are reacting to a reaction video right now. So <laughs> I'm reacting to a reactor. Inception. Right. The craziest thing I've ever heard her say by far. Okay, let me go forward here where he starts talking. Thing out loud. This is the craziest thing I've ever heard. Not only is the craziest, it's the stupidest, and it's also untrue. Can you hear it? Whoopi Goldberg it, should yeah. be ashamed of herself for what she said in this video. And I don't want to hear nothing about anybody saying that there's Republicans on the view. It does not exist. It is insane to me that these women will talk over other people, yell them out of the room. Whoopi ran off the stage one time. I don't. I forgot who she brought on. She ran off the stage. Judge Janine Pirro. She ran off the stage in the back cussing and acting a fool. And she said something <laughs> this ridiculous, and not one person checked her on it. Not one person on the – not the Republicans. Nobody checked her. All right, her let me get to what she says. Hold on. Because these are the dumb people that we were talking about, okay? Right. Not one of these women on the, on the View have common sense, and it is by design. Because if they did have somebody on the left that did have common sense, that person, because most smart people, I told this to, to I, I said this to Andrea, most intelligent people, even if they're on the left, they don't, you can't go very long playing dumb when you are intelligent because you just, it, there's an ego thing. You don't want to be, come across that way. So these women have to literally be dumb to be on there i'm sorry if that's <laughs> offending anyone but you know but I'm a think of, you know. who was marie antoinette by the way she was known to be a very naive they don't know if if so in history the french revolution mm -hmm. do you know anything about the french revolution I, I know a lot about the french revolution but not much about marie specifically okay so what was the french revolution what, what it was basically against the elites the elites against the poor right it goes, there's a great book called The Memoirs Illustrating the History of Jacobinism. Uh, the Jacobins were the ones behind the French Revolution, and they were uh, basically expanding upon Adam Weishaupt's uh, mission uh, that he started in Germany. And so they were getting rid of any of the opposition and leadership that, you know, and beheading people in, in religious circles and get, getting rid of anybody that believed in God. And so basically what we see today um, is exactly what the French Revolution was all about, but it was under the guise of freedom. And so they had to get, they were getting rid of anybody that was a threat to their tyrannical order. Okay. And then we don't know much about Marie Antoinette and her husband that were beheaded. Right. Uh, we, some say that they were innocent, that they were like the, uh, when I say innocent, I mean, they weren't a uh, part of this, the, Probably the, not. The, that's why. That's why the they're Jacobins, by the Jacobins were pointing to them and saying, "There's your real enemy. Yeah, there's the tyrants." And then Marie Antoinette and her husband, they were just throwing parties and living lavishly, and were disconnected. 
They weren't necessary, but they were maybe puppets even. We don't know. Very similar to what happened in Cuba with Fidel Castro and the and the and the individuals that were there before, is that they were pointed out as, you know, this corrupt regime, and that Castro was nothing but a freedom fire. You had the you New York Times, of course, Iraq supporting. or Iran also. Yeah, the the Shah, so, the Shah, yeah. same thing. And so they get rid of the old order and bring in the new order, and oh, oh my goodness, we had no idea that they were such bad people. Like it was obvious. Right. Yeah. And then so the reason I say Marie Antoinette, because she is supposedly stereotypically uh, portrayed as someone that was very disconnected, didn't know what was going on. And it's possible she didn't. But making statements like let them eat cake, she was asked, what do we do with the poor? And apparently and right. I, I think that's a wise tell. I don't know if she said it or not. But apparently she was like that, where she was so disconnected from real people that she said let them eat cake oh they didn't have bread the poor do not have bread so apparently she said well let them eat cake let them eat cake so they don't have bread let them eat cake then (laughs) anyway but we i don't know we don't know but she was disconnected we know that so here is and, and, and that's what they do is the is the conspiracy uses legitimate qualms and complaints of the lower class and it uses it as an excuse, a launch pad to be able to implement their, their tyranny. Right. Yeah. So here are a group of women that I the thought that came to my mind is this is modern day Marie Antoinetteism. Just let's look at a scenario where the Supreme Court says, yes, he has that. He has all those rights. He is immune from everything. Yeah. You know what Joe Biden could do since he is presently president? What? Whoa. <laughs> he could throw every Republican in jail. How, how, how was she reading off a piece of paper? So I, I'm hoping <laughs> to God somebody didn't slip in, in the bag of crack fell down their throat and they were high <laughs> when they wrote this. <laughs> what, what, he could put every Republican in jail. What does that even mean? The president do not have the authority to no, arrest he people. He doesn't. But here's here's my point. And I'm gonna. That's all I really wanted to show you here. <laughs> well, no, that's not. What I, I, I want to know what she's reading too. That's hilarious. Here, let's go right here. But here, here, what I do want to say is they're always claiming that Trump is a guy that we need to be careful to start arresting, like a Gestapo type, right, right situation. But they're okay with a Gestapo type scenario with. Uh, yeah, they're not against Biden. Gestapo's. They're only against Gestapo's against them. Right. Which Trump has no. Uh, I know you have your own ideas, but I'm just saying <laughs> Ben doesn't trust anyone. But and I'm not saying he's not. Uh, there's not some foundation there. But my point is, is that. Gestapoism is Gestapoism, no matter what it comes from, right. where it comes from, and whether it's from the right or left. You go to other countries in Central America and South America, and they have parties that we don't even understand. Political parties, right? They don't yep. have the same uh, issues and the same uh, completely different mindset, social ills, and and the economy. Everything is different, right? So right. you don't understand the parties there until you live there. Then you're like, oh, this is why you're in this party. This is why you're in this party. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I yeah. mean, he could. I mean, not no, no, no. This is not because a good thing. Totally because you have totally, he could yeah. go. He, what this, this means. President would have. Right. What is their p- motivation for not doing it right away? Well, unfortunately, some people are saying the motivation <laughs> is that there are certain conservative justices that have been appointed by Trump that want to help him. And because we know the end result is if this case is not resolved by the time uh, of the election and he, God forbid, becomes the president of the United States, poo, poo. The, the Justice Department policy is that you cannot indict nor put on trial a sitting president right and so it's his get out of he jail oh in jail it's ha- okay so anyway idiots right she's supposed to be the smarter one in the group but who whoopee no the other lady oh that the was other one speaking. that was talking okay yeah so anyway i want to say something that i want i want your words but 
I guess my point for showing that is, well, A, I don't understand how somebody can live with themselves knowing that they literally have people like her, the smart one, I guess, go up there and make sense when it's not making sense, but will force the narrative to try to make sense of it to the public, to the people sitting in the audience. Right. And you notice that the end or the conclusion of everything, they, they could say a lot of word salad. They could throw out all this word salad, but the end, the conclusion of everything they have to say is not founded on anything of uh, truthful or, or substantial. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. It ends with a poo poo or <laughs> and a jail, get out of jail free card. There's some okay. platitude that means nothing. Right. So anyway, what do you think about all this that I've, been ranting about <laughs> well this last one specifically i mean just uh, it's you have two different things that you can look at you can say okay does the president have those powers within the constitution are those powers that are delegated to him the answer is clearly no 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 he doesn't um but you have historical precedents and you have illegal laws what the founding fathers in the declaration of independence called pretend legislation you have ever since 9-11, we have these um, declarations of emergency where the president assumed powers that he didn't have. And then you have historical presidents under, uh, you know, former tyrants um, that they did. There were that there have been presidents in the past that have arrested um, uh, what's a, uh, you know, journalists that were reporting stories that he didn't like. And so. You, you have precedents that, you know, that might be what she's going off of, of, of former tyrants and, and then saying, hey, why doesn't my president arrest people I don't like? And so and then we have the emergency powers under 9-11 that, uh, you know, that he can act like a tyrant if he wants to. And so, you know, they they're a lot of times they only do things where they can only go so far, because like we saw in 2020 and 2021, where when the government really stepped outside of its bounds, people started to wake up and they recognize that. And so they don't normally go full tyrant um, because they think, you know, because they realize that there's only so much they can get away with. And so, um, you know, is it on paper somewhere like her, her note card that uh, it could happen? I mean, you know, it hasn't, it wouldn't be the first well, time. Okay. And but it's not within the delegated powers in the constitution at all. Well, it's the reason I brought that up. All, all of that, because like yeah. a lot of it wasn't even. It, it doesn't look related until I say this, right? So I, yeah. I just, I kind of just threw up, vomited a bunch of. <laughs> well, it's all things, connected to one big hole. Things sure. that were bothering me, and I think the main thing is tyranny. But the other yeah. thing is, where did Christian nationalism get a? Why did it? When did that start getting a bad rap? Like when. You, you were talking to me earlier and you mentioned Obama. Mm -hmm. Are you trying to be careful? You're like, no, oh, you, no. You should be oh, careful, about Troy. during the Obama administration, the Homeland Security put out a report claiming that people with home, you know, with that, you know, fixated on the Constitution, fixated on the Constitution, heaven forbid, had food storage, were, you know, uh, military veterans, supported Ron Paul. Those were people that were considered, you know, potentially, ter you know, domestic terrorists. And so, you know, the, that kind of a thing has been going on for, for a long, long time. I remember, I don't remember personally, but I remember reading, you know, newspaper articles after the assassination of John F. Kennedy, where the mainstream media was blaming, again, constitutionalists uh, for the assassination because they were calling him out for his unconstitutional activities. And so by calling out the president, you are, you know, therefore complicit or an accomplice to his death. And so, you know, th this, all of this, you know, if you don't like this person that died, that means you're a part of the people that, that, that killed them. Yeah. This, you know, false associations has been going on for a long, long time. And, you know, Christian nationalism, this, you know, pe people that say that or that the, the masses that hear that don't even know what that means. You know, what, what are you even trying to say by that? We have an author that I had on that talked about Ezra Tapp Benson and the Apostles not getting along, and he's writing a, yeah. now a book about white Christian nationalism yeah. and tying that in with the the church in Utah, calling them basically white Mormon nationalists or white yeah. white Christian Latter Day Saint nationalists. 
Right. And I'm like, what does that mean? I even asked them most of these people. And even this author, I believe it was sheltered growing up coming from a nice white middle upper middle class, uh, family in Utah or Idaho, uh, that where they didn't have friends. I grew up with black friends, Mexican friends, Chinese friends. I had all kinds of friends. I live in California. You lived in California. You know what I'm talking. You grew up in California. So we hear people from Utah that are, that have Mormon guilt that grew up in a very conservative Mormon family. Their parents loved Ezra Tappins. And then that this author talks about growing up with his dad saying, what would Benson do? You know? Yeah. Yeah. What would Benson do? Um, <laughs> growing up like that. And then what they do is they rebel and then they become leftist college professors and fight against whatever their parents raised them with. That's the hippie generation. Mm-hmm. You know, their parents were World War II people that loved the yeah. America. And they fought it. They rebelled against that in the late 60s, the, the, the boomers. And this, that's what's going on all over again times 10, though. Uh, Neo-Marxism has penetrated our government horribly what do we do is the constitution dead ben well i've mentioned this before i i know the, and i want you to say it again <laughs> in 1844 at the death of the prophet joseph you know that well leading up to his death and the creation of the council of 50 in the kingdom of god joseph himself was saying that he, as he's running for president that the united states has apostatized from the constitution and it's our role right now is to find a place outside of the United States where we can live according to the principles of the Constitution because the United States has rejected them. And that's exactly what the Council of 50 and the Quorum of the Twelve said after the death of Joseph. Brigham Young saying that, you know, we, we have no intent of going under any other government except for the government of God as we leave the United States because the Constitution was at that point a, uh, you know, in the United States of 1887, even though, you know, by name, just it's kind of like trans uh, the, the the trans movement is just because you call something something doesn't mean it's that thing, and um, the United States was no longer the United States of eighteen of seventeen eighty seven, and so they they felt they had to flee, and I agree with them completely. Yeah, like I said, brothers and sisters, I am I am not I'm not I'm not a wordy person, um, but I know what I feel, I know what I think. And there's lots of people out there like me as well that we know what's right and what's wrong. You don't have to be a rocket scientist, right? That's an old saying. You don't, you don't have to be a genius to know when something is wrong. Right. Right. All right, brother. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you. Great to be with you.